Hi, this is Paul Thomas at Interfex 2012, and I'm in the Accelerex booth today talking with President Parrish Gallagher. Parrish, thanks for being with us again. Thank you, Paul. Parrish, uh, you've had your Flex Factory out for uh, several years now, three, four years. Um, where, what's the latest you can tell us in terms of its, its uh, technologies and its adoption? So we began the development of the Flex Factory technology in 2002 when we started Accelerex. And uh, for the first five years of the company, we used the Flex Factory technology internally as part of our CMO services manufacturing capability. Mm -hmm. And through those five years, we perfected the technology. We scaled it up from 100 liter to 2,000 liter. And we extended the offering all the way down the production line, all the way to bulk product. Mm -hmm. And then in around 2007 to 2009, we decided to commercialize. We were ready to commercialize the technology. And so we began going out and advertising it externally. Uh, and since that time, we've sold four flex factories worldwide uh, to companies in uh, Russia, uh, in Europe, uh, and the US. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about these companies. What companies are coming to you and, and uh, really wanting to make use of this technology and the whole flex factory idea? Yeah. So uh, it's quite a variety of companies. In some cases, it may be a contract manufacturer, such as uh, Gallus uh, in St. Louis. Uh, in other cases, it's companies that want to make biosimilars, uh, such as companies in, in Russia. Uh, and then in other ca cases, it's companies that are really sort of biotech companies, and they have a combination of you know, biotech drugs, biotherapeutics, and even vaccines. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of uh, a good timing on a lot of count, and a lot of different counts in terms of different companies from different areas that are are interested in in Flex Factory. Um, why don't you give us kind of a tour of what's the latest and where you are in terms of the extent of all of your, uh, you know, all of your technology here? Okay. So it begins with obviously being able to grow the cells that produce the product, and as you can see uh, here on my left and behind Paul, we have. Uh, now the largest scale bioreactor system uh, available in the industry. We were the first to develop a 2,000 liter scale GMP uh, stirred tank bioreactor that is single use. Uh, and uh, we've uh, developed the technology to perform at a very, very high performance level for a variety of cell lines. And uh, to uh, drive that system, we've uh, further hardened and developed our automation platform uh, which uses Wonderwear InBatch uh, and Rockwell uh, controllers. And uh, this portable control capability uh, has the ability, obviously, to control the bioreactors, but also to collect the data uh, and to report the batch data at the end of the batch. Mm -hmm. So we have a full line of bioreactor systems with, with this automation. Uh, and the, uh, the bioreactor uh, offering has been expanded from up to 2,000 liters, as I mentioned, but also back down to 10 liters. So now we are the first company that has, that has a fully scalable from 10 liter bench top all the way up to 50, 200, 500, 1,000 liter, and 2,000 liter working volume single use third tank capability. This is really critical for people that are developing and manufacturing and scaling up and, That's and correct. needing so to now, have that consistent technology, exactly. consistent platform. That's right. So now in the laboratory, mm -hmm. they can do scale-down modeling by running in the 10-liter scale system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a process that is, is going to simulate the 2,000-liter scale. Mm -hmm. So in this way, at the 10-liter scale, they can get a preview of how well their process is going to, perf going to perform as they scale it up. So we mm -hmm. call that scale-down modeling. Mm -hmm. And clearly, uh, there's an advantage with the 10-liter in that, as you mentioned, it's a small scale. We also built a 10 liter uh, bioreactor with a bag, so it's the same bag chemistry as the larger scale systems, mm -hmm. so you have a consistent bag contact material. Mm -hmm. It uses the same control systems at the 10 liter as at the 2000 liter, mm -hmm. so that way you have the same control platform. Mm -hmm. And we use the same vessel geometry and agitation and aeration systems uh, in, this, in the small scale as in the large scale. So this way we have a scalability uh, capability across the entire line from 10,000 liters to uh, 10 liters to 2,000 liters. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's let's finish the tour here if we can. So obviously after bioreaction, we need to do a lot of unit uh, processing to uh, separate the cells and to purify the product out of the cell broth. 
Mm -hmm. And we do that with a variety of unit operations. Um, for uh, you know, space because of space limitations, we can't show all those unit operations here. But we have several examples here to my left of the downstream processing of uh, the batch of, of product that we would be making in our reactor systems. So uh, we use a lot of mixer systems mm -hmm. uh, that are used to make the media that goes into the bioreactor. Sure. These are single-use mixers. Uh, they're also used to make buffers that are fed to the purification systems. And they're also used for storing product you know, that you're actually producing uh, along the way. So you can store the product as intermediates down through the production line in these mixing systems. And we have a whole variety of these from 50 liters all the way up to 1,000 liters. And they have a whole variety of capabilities, including um, agitation, temperature control, a pH and conductivity control, and weight control. Mm -hmm. Moving down the line, we have just introduced uh, the X-Connect uh, connectivity solution. So when you set up a production line, obviously you have to make connections between every unit operation with single-use components. Right. And if you add up all the components that you need to put together in order to make all those connections between all those steps, you end up with thousands of components. Mm -hmm. So we pre-engineered these components into a complete kit. As you can see, this kit down here uh, is a completely uh, wrapped kit, mm -hmm. uh, which is just one of 20 or 30 kits that you would buy to produce or use to produce an entire batch of drug. <clears throat> so by pre-assembling them with all the documentation and, and we irradiate them, the customer now can quickly just buy a kit, take it out on the floor, set it up and connect the unit operations and be ready to make drug right away. Mm -hmm. So we call that X-Connect mm -hmm. uh, tubing sets. Mm -hmm. Moving down the line for purification, uh, the Flex Factory is unique in that it takes the beauty of the clean room and the cleanliness of the clean room and shrinks it. And by doing that, we take the operator out of the clean room. The operator is the largest source of contamination and purification because of the, the things that we bring with us. And uh, the, we keep the machinery inside, the operator comes out. These modules are pressurized with HEPA filtered air, and that gives us a clean environment under computer control, so it's computer controlled to stay positive pressure. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we provide a very clean environment for the purification step. This also frees up the operator from, from not having to go into that clean room. Mm -hmm. What that means is mm -hmm. the operator is now free to walk up and down the line from bioreactor all the way down to the end of the bat, uh, production line mm -hmm. in the same level of gowning, mm -hmm. in the same room, in an open suite, mm -hmm. without having to go into, into and out of multiple clean rooms. Now the advantages of that are first, higher quality manufacturing because the operator is not in the clean room and bringing in his dirt, his or her dirt. Number two, we cut the gowning cost by about two-thirds because we're only using one level of gown for the whole line. Mm -hmm. Number three, we can reduce the labor by about 30% because we have one team now that moves up and down the line instead of multiple teams in the different clean rooms. Number four, we've shrunk the amount of purified air that we need to make by about 80%. So the cost for you know purifying that air and blowing that air, the utility costs are lowered. And fifthly, we reduce the amount of HVAC systems needed to supply that clean air to these modules. Mm -hmm. So in that way, we have four or five cost reduction, capital and operating cost reduction benefits of the Flex Factory modular systems. They're also set up for spill containment, so if there is a rupture of a line, which may be more likely in a single-use type of facility where right. you could blow up a, a connection or a tube, mm -hmm. or in a pump you could lose you know, integrity of the line, uh, the modules are set up with a collection tray to collect any potential spills. And obviously the operator is protected from a gross aerosol production in the event of, a, in the event of an excursion or a release. Mm -hmm. Because each module is positive pressure to the room and we're feeding it with independent air from an independent supply, we also have full segregation between the modules. The advantage of that is we can put different batches of product in different modules in the same space with the same team. 
So you can see now your labor team, your manufacturing labor team, is actually able to make multiple dra bo dra batches of drug at the same time, mm -hmm. or potentially multiple products at the same time. Mm -hmm. This is something that we've already started to do uh, with several companies. Almost unthinkable uh, Almost several years unthinkable. ago. But, but think of the efficiency gain. Yeah. You know, you got one team and now you're making two drugs at the same time. Mm -hmm. The labor cost is cut in half for each mm -hmm. drug, right? Mm -hmm. If you do three, it's cut by, you know, two thirds. Mm -hmm. So it's a very significant, you know, huge leverage on operating costs to be able to make multiple drugs at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Moving down the line, <clears throat> we can purify the product using uh, single-use technology such as the GE Active Ready system shown in the module here. The GE Active Ready system is a single-use system <clears throat> that uses pre-packed column technology. You may be able to see it there, I'm not sure. Uh, in that way we don't have to pack columns on the floor. We can bring out a pre-packed column, connect it up, and use it right away. The automation was extended from the bioreactor system down through all the unit operations as well. So here we have no, sure. Here we have a, a strong arm automation system, which is similarly set up like the bioreactor to uh, run all the different unit operations down the line, including active ready, uh, or even ultrafiltration, or depth filtration, or buffer exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this way, we have the same automation platform <clears throat> across the entire production line. And that, that does a number of things. It simplifies training, obviously. Mm -hmm. Simplifies the documentation. It simplifies the collection of the data and the, and the reporting out of the data from the batch. And it simplifies the validation, of course, of all of those things. So lastly, we get to the end of the process. And now we can, in the same, again, the same production suite, Flex Factory suite, in the last module, we can produce the bulk drug substance. So this is the final filtered uh, bulk drug uh, that uh, is suitable for uh, ultimately fill finish in some other facility. So what we're really seeing here is the fruition of your your original idea of, a, of an end-to-end -end full platform uh, that you know somebody can manufacture and and really have a, a full solution uh, provided for them. Right. You know, at the end of the day, it's not about equipment you know, being delivered to you by a supplier. To us, it's about making pure drug safely uh, in a fashion that keeps it clean so that it conforms to specifications for purification and quality standards. Uh, and doing that in an integrated way, as you, as you said, in a complete sort of turnkey capability. And, and that brings to mind the types of customers that we're seeing today as a result of that. Because it is a turnkey end-to-end -end capability, we have whole new customers coming out of their current businesses and into the, into the biologic space. Many people that really couldn't think about doing it before. One example is contract manufacturers who are in the stainless steel space of stainless steel facilities, but now they want to upgrade their technology to more efficient, more flexible capability. So we're working with many CMOs and enabling them to do that. And using the flex factory technology and single use manufacturing methodologies, they are lowering their bottom line and incre increasing their profit margins. But also providing a higher quality drug to their clients because there is, there's a less chance of contaminating that product using the flex factory platform. Another type of customer that's coming out that's a new type of customer uh, is the mid-tier biotech companies who have enormous capacity uh, internally but they ha also have a lot of money for technology development. Mm -hmm. They're restructuring their manufacturing capacity to be more efficient. They have factory of the future initiatives in which they have strategy teams that are assessing new technologies, doing studies, doing due diligence, and they're, they're now beginning to implement their next 20, 25 year factory of the future strategies using these kinds of technologies. So that's another tier of customers for us. Mm -hmm. A third tier of customers for us are companies that want to get into biosimilars. And uh, examples are companies that are in small molecules but want to get in, into biologics. And they, they, they often turn to biosimilars as a logical play because they were making generics in the sure. small molecule space. Mm -hmm. So again, they need a lot of process support. So they need, to help, they need help understanding how to make a biologic, how to do it in an integrated fashion doing it quickly, getting it up and running quickly, so time to revenue is obviously very important, and then controlling operating costs is clearly an advantage 
in, in, in their case because of the competition in the biosimilar space. Lastly, we see vaccine companies transitioning from eggs to cell culture. So that's another new market that's opened up. And again, by lowering the barriers to getting into you know, the technology with the single use and the modular formats, we're enabling vaccine companies to get out of eggs and to get into cell-based manufacturing of vaccines, which is a wonderful, you know, very exciting area. Uh, we're, we expect to see a lot, a lot of growth in, that, in the vaccine space as that new energy comes into that, that industry. So it's really the kind of the realization of this factory of the future that people have been talking about a lot, but you could say the future is really sort of here now with this sort of complete set of technologies right, that we have. Right, right. And, and we accelerated that new future by, again, internally validating the technology for the first five years of the company, mm -hmm. producing many, many different drugs in the Flex Factory internally at Accelerex. There are eight U.S. INDs on file that have been uh, for drugs that have been produced in the Flex Factory that have been filed by our customers and also a U.K. Uh, European filing. So we've accelerated the, tech, the hardening of the technology and we've also accelerated the regulatory adoption of the technology uh, in the history, throughout the history of Accelerex. Well, Paris, thanks so much for giving us an update on, on all that's going on, and congratulations. You've got uh, a lot of success going in your way. Thank you. Well, we have a great team. Thank you very much. A lot of people work very hard. You're welcome. Good to talk to you. Thank you.